Hello and welcome to the Talking Wealth Podcast. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. And today we've got a rip snorter of a podcast for us talking about the golden rules to building wealth. And we'll talk to you about the challenges people have to get into retirement and building wealth. But before we get into this exciting topic, I need to introduce my co-host, Janine Cox. How are you? Fantastic, thanks. And yourself? Me, I'm pretty excited, actually. Are you? You like talking about this sort of thing, don't you? I do, because so many people think about building wealth as just you know, buying some stocks and investment property, mm. but it's like, planning. No, it's <laughs> completely the opposite. It's mm. about planning to get your investments, which we'll talk about. Now, this podcast is n- not an extension of the last one, one we did, um, which was all on the moods of the market, but mm. that was a great one to be oh, a yeah. precursor to this. So if they haven't seen that, I really enjoyed that one because it helps you understand what the market's doing. So this one is a two-part series, these mm. golden rules to building well. So first one is like, look at what the objective is. What are we trying to do? And then the second one is more how to do that mm. because as as we know, people just want to you know, buy a stock or buy a house, but mm. there's no more planning, you know, and that's why I think the statistic still is today that somewhere around 70 to 80% of people are still retiring on government pensions. It's probably even 90, closer to 90%. I don't but the think majority it's that high anymore because, it is. But because if the average age of people retiring is 55, how is that possible? How would the average age they're retiring, where did you get that well, from? Well, a lot of people are retiring at 55. That's I what I've been hearing. I don't know anybody that's retiring at 55. Well, look, it, it was 65 was the big you know, mm-hmm. around the 60s was the age, but apparently there's a lot of people now retiring I think at you need to make that up with some solid stats from the ABS <laughs> and everything else. Otherwise, I'm not going to believe you because I seriously don't know anybody at 55 that's retiring. I know yep. a couple of people that retired mm. sort of in their 50s and 60s. but Look, very, I mean, I've had very, conversations very with very people. Few. People can actually retire earlier than they think they can. Well, they can. I've but had these need... conversations and people mm. – and this is where this topic is really good because it makes people stop and think and look – at the situation and so it was a question of well how much do you think that you needed to have for retirement Mm. and they didn't really know well most people don't know Mm. and what we know is they leave their planning way too Mm. late because we constantly get the phone calls going i haven't invested i want to start investing i'm 55 i'm going to retire i want to retire by the time i'm 60 or 65 Mm. i need you to do this can you do it and you go well you know your inability to plan doesn't constitute an emergency in my case the answer is not no the answer is not. No, they can do it. And that's what we're mm. going to share with you, how you can do that and how you can build your wealth. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the earlier you start, the better because a lot of compounding comes into it. But we're going to go through these slides that we're going to go mm-hmm. through. So if you are watching on, a, watching on a podcast, if you're listening to this podcast in your car or on, on the train or whatever you are, we're actually going to a PowerPoint presentation, which is why I mentioned the one we did last time mm. on the moods of the market. That was a presentation about nine years ago we mm. did. Now, these slides are the sort of extension of that same presentation, basically. Mm. So the next two podcasts that you're going to see, so you can go to YouTube, um, you know, type in Wealth Within TV and you'll see these podcasts. So you'll see this one, which is the Golden Rules to Building Wealth Part 1, and then we'll have Part 2 um, probably in a week or two. Uh, it'll come out. But please go and do that. And if you are listening to us on a podcast, uh, audio podcast, just give us a five-star review on iTunes or whatever it is and and, um, you know, give it a Yes, please nice, do. And I that, love that will get to, dial off my back. I please love help me listening out. <laughs> to Janine's dulcet tones um, from all of that. But let's bring up the, the, the actual PowerPoint and we'll start talking about that because obviously the topic is golden rules to building, you know, to building wealth. But the challenge that people have mm. is we always talk, hear the words lifestyle mm-hmm. all of the time. So it's about maintaining our like, current lifestyle. Yes. Whatever that is. But it's also we need to build a lifestyle for the future, mm. but then we need to create balance mm-hmm. in there too because, you know, you can't have sacrifice everything mm. for the future, but you can't also spend everything now so you don't have a future because mm. the one thing that, that's certain is we, we're born and we die. Yep. It's simple. How long that the distance between those two points is whatever that is. But we know we're going to live tomorrow or the day after the day after. So how many days in advance are we going to live and how are we going to fund that, mm. especially if we don't have a job because... Well, we- that's a, it's a hard part, isn't it? Because you can't just, mm. you don't, like you say, you don't know when your number's up. So you can't sort of factor that in really. You can only just look at what the statistics are in terms of the average age for men mm. and w- women today and then use that information to help you plan. Yeah. So what's the average age that somebody's passing away? 
for men and women now. It's in the, it's in the 80s well, now. Literally in the 80s but now. But what would it, like, what about your family situation? Would you mm. look at your parents, grandparents and look at the at their average age and just and well, sort of use can, that as a guide? You can, I suppose it's a rough guide, but you probably can't do that because they didn't have mm. the same um, health or sanitary conditions some of those people had. They don't How have old are you going health. back here? Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking the medical <laughs> advances and everything, you know. Now, yeah, now it changes every five years. Now they're medicine, talking about they'll say, you know, they'll say of diabetes in, you know, in a few years or all mm. these sorts of things. So it's like the generation that are sort of 30 and under, they're probably going to live closer to 90 to 100 years, you know, mm. the way that things are going there. You know, with, you know with, with artificial intelligence, maybe they'll plug that into people's brains. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But the moment is the challenge is we Maybe have we'll now. be walking around as we're like a 90-year-old walking in one of those big, like you see in some Zimmer of those, frames. <laughs> you know, cyber cyber frames. You know, oh, cyber frames. You know, you're in this big machine like a, is it, what's what's the movie called? Cyborgs or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those, it's one of those DC movies that you like or Marvel movies that you like. Possibly. You're a tragic. <laughs> she really is a tragic. But that's our challenge is we, we need, we have a lifestyle today and some people overdo their lifestyle. Mm. They have too much fun today so they've got nothing tomorrow. But as a, having yep. that nice balance where you have a, a, a lifestyle now, but you're also planning for that future because as this, you know, I was saying is you, you're going to live the life in the future. Mm. What you do today will determine the quality of that life into the future. And we're not just talking about money. I'm talking about your health as well, mm. what you eat and what you drink the exercise you do or don't do, you know, whether you meditate, all of those things will determine your health and that then your money side of things is well, how much money you're going to have. Mm. And some people, they just want a shack yep. in the bush, you know, like my, True. you know, like some of my family got a mm. shack in the bush, but other people want to have a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and live on the, a big mansion on the mm. beach. Well, whatever that is for that person or that family is what it is. But what, what we're going to talk about I mean, today is, uh, as we're going along, yeah. people have an idea about what they want, but... How many people actually really think about what they want their lifestyle to be today, you know, mm. five years from now, 10 years from now? That's the next podcast. You know, we're retirement. It's not just about, because mm. if we keep saying to everybody, oh, well, think about your retirement and people think, well, hang on, it's, you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now. I think about it now. Um, it's too hard. Yeah, but what if they started thinking just in 10 years, where do you want to be? And then... T- 20 years, where do you want to be? And then mm. take it from there before you know, know it. You've already planned for your retirement. Correct. And that's some of the stuff Make we'll it easier. in our next podcast or the part two of this sort of mm. podcast. But you are right. I mean, I was always from a very young age planning for the future and, and putting money aside, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to talk Look, a bit I, about that. I, I once read this book and yeah. it just blew me you away. Only read one I think. Book. Is that what it is? I once read a book. <laughs> and I don't know what to say to that one. Um, but anyway. I read this book and it blew me away because it was about this immigrant. Now, when it comes to lifestyle and things, I have to say the Europeans do it really well because it's a very much, you know, family orientated, big lifestyle. It's all about lifestyle. In some Mm. countries, I think they still have a a sleep at two o'clock, is it? Siesta. Mm. Um, Which obviously we don't do, but maybe that's one of the best things for for your health. I don't know. It could be. Look, when we're we're thinking about that and looking at – you know, what other people are doing in other countries. Australia is different. We have a, we, we seem to have a very relaxed mm. lifestyle, but we, really do we? That's the thing. Well, that's the thing is, is that an oxymoron to say we have a relaxed, relaxed lifestyle when there's so many people under stress right now. Mm. We have a lot of people with mortgage stress. We have a lot of people that are stressed about interest rates going up, the environment, the the economy. You know, again, this morning I was only watching the news and I was like, oh, we had their treasurer saying, oh, I don't think we're going to go into a recession, but we're well placed. And it's like, I've heard that before too. Yeah. So, but it's about that mood that we talked about mm. in our last podcast is what is the mood of people right now? And if somebody's sitting there listening to this podcast on the train or, you know, going home in the car or whatever they do, or you're watching us on YouTube. And I think the level there is, or the, 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 the judgment is, if you're worried about money at any stage during a week, then you need to do something Mm. because if you're worried about paying the mortgage or you're worried about interest rates going up or if you're worried about paying your gas bill or if you're worried about paying your electricity bill or all the school fees, all Mm. that sort of stuff, then that to me is like a red rag to a bull or a big signpost, big flashing one that you see them and go boom, 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 you need to do something. Sit down and look at the situation. Sit down and look Mm. at the situation because that whole thinking then is I don't have enough Mm. is not a prosperity thinking. And that's a limiting thinking. And we do mm-hmm. go into podcasts where we talk about those sorts of things. And to me, there's trillions of dollars running past your face every single second of the day. 
you just got to grab a little bit of that. So how do we do that? So that's part of the challenge right. we're going to go through is how do we not only maintain our lifestyle, and some people need to adjust their lifestyle, <laughs> you know, because it's a bit too much of a lifestyle. Um, how do you mean? Well, you know, a bit more too much fun. I mean, they say only the too good, much fun. Well, they they, they say <laughs> only the, the good place. die young, so I must be very bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but we want to obviously people want to maintain a reasonable lifestyle, but we do need to plan for the future because we will be there, and what we do today will determine how good or bad that is. Mm. And all too often, we're seeing people retiring now that are having a pretty ordinary existence. Mm. More so, they're just. They're just struggling to pay their bills. They've just got a bit of enough to eat, that sort of stuff. They're not really doing what they thought that they would do in retirement. I think that's what we need to ask people to think there's about. The what would you like thing, life to be in the retirement? There's, well, there's the other side of thing too yeah. is that you could have too much, <gasps> right? Jeez, that's How a much bad is too thing much? Have, is isn't that it? the right question? Too much lifestyle. <laughs> no, too much, not just lifestyle, but too much in terms of money because money can create all sorts of opportunities for well, people. Well, it's an energy. Yeah, yeah, it's an energy, 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 but how much is, is do you need all that? Like, I'd like to have know, that. I asked well, that question. I, I said, you know, do you need all that money? And they said, no. Oh, well, have you actually thought about what you're going to do with it? Oh, the kids will, I'll let the kids worry about it when I die. And that was <laughs> the attitude. The problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like, I'd, you know, look, to me, it's, you know, I've been broken. I've been rich and rich is much better than broke, mm. you know. Well, well look, t- I've, I've, I was, I've, I'm not saying, so, they said that wrong. I said, I've been rich, I am rich, but. Um, but I've been that. broke a few times. It's not scary. Yeah, but, but what, what's is the better. goal? Is the is the challenge just lifestyle, or do people just really want to be happy? It's security, yeah, and happiness, mm. and that's to me is if you're happy and you feel secure, then it doesn't matter whether you work or you don't mm. work, and that sort of because stuff. Because look at Ukraine. Mm. I mean, there were people there who had lo- probably mm. lots of money. They had wealth, Possibly, and it's yeah, all gone in, in an instant. Well, it can be. It's not like it's a definite. You but, can, but doesn't mean you shut the doors and go into a, into hibernation <laughs> for the next decade. No, too. And some of those people, we've seen a lot of. But look, it's a sad situation, mm. isn't it, over there? I mean, I'm not laughing at that's. Mm. I wasn't laughing at that. I was just laughing at that the comment that you're making because I always time. laugh at you. Yeah. I know that. Do you know there's a lot of Russians going to Bali? Really? Yeah, a lot Fantastic. of it's because of the war. They're moving. They're going to. Um, to Bali, I was a reading neutral, an article a neutral zone. in the Fin Review the other day. I was reading it, and they're going there, and they're sort of being tech people mm. uh, in this place, and they're creating havoc in Bali. And Bali was trying to change some laws to not have them there anymore. Is that propaganda? Um, though? No, it was in the Financial Review. Is the Financial Review doesn't do propaganda, does it? Okay, I'm not going to get into that because I'll get into trouble. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, so the challenge is, but what what we're talking about is what does a balance and fulfilled lifestyle mean to you. Mm. Now, I'm not asking you, Janine, because I know what you think, a balanced and fulfilled lifestyle, but I'm asking the people that are listening and watching us, what is it? That's what a does great it mean question. to you? Mm. And to me, it, when I, when I read that statement, I go, immediately in my head it's like, well, I need to be there with my partner and mm. family and whatever else. And it's not meaning just to me. You because, need time with them. Well, obviously. it's not. I'm not saying about time. It's about what do we, them. what do we want, not just me. Okay. Want. And because yep. obviously, you know, we all have a lifestyle. You know, like your husband, it's playing golf every week, probably <laughs> every day if he could. <laughs> That's what I want. You know, but some people, mm. it's you know, family around. You know, having mm. a big house that every week there's 30 people come on your family and you all just sit down and eat for three hours and yep. r- roll around in the floor the other three hours. But whatever that is, but to me, I was thinking about, you know, when we used to do some of the workshops, we used to talk to people about doing this big chart, mm. you know, which was like all these lifestyle pictures or pictures of their life that they'd cut out of magazines. A vision board. A vision board. That was, I am trying to remember the name and I knew mm. you'd have it. But sitting down with your family to do that, it's an amazing thing. Mm. And I know you've done it. I've done yeah. it a few times. You just cut pictures out of magazines mm. or whatever else or travel brochures. And it's not always about, you know, an overseas trip or, a you know, um, you know, a brand new car, whatever that is. It could be just, the, you know, college or, you know, going to university for your kids. We or, did that to have a child. Yeah. Mm. So that's, it's an amazing thing to do. So to me that's how you start to find out what a balanced and fulfilled lifestyle means to you. Mm. And it could be a symbol. For some people it's a symbol, uh, a religious symbol because it's that their faith in mm-hmm. that religion. Or it could be that it is... Um, lots of holidays. Healthy, you know. <laughs> Travel. Somebody doing yoga on the beach. Could you know, be trees, whatever that lots means of trees you. and... 
yeah. doing nature ev- environmental things. So I'd, I would strongly suggest people do one of those mm. um, with their with their partner. If you're a single person, do it, you know you can do it on your own. But in that one, I did that one of those as a single person, and I put pictures of me being in a family life. Yeah, you know what a great idea married. for kids too. It's brilliant for them. Yeah, it's brilliant for them because it gets you focused on what you want, not mm. what you don't want. And all too often we focus on what we don't want in our life, you know. like Well, what are we teaching the next generation by, you know, being the example? Well, that's true too. Mm. And again, you know, I've done podcasts on, you know, my generation, mm. how we talk to Gen Zs. You know, I think our generation is just crap our language to Gen Zs. Mm. It's giving, it's making their life hard. Yep. And I think we need to change that, that mm. how we speak to them, but that's a whole other thing. So... We get down into the challenge and we've the slide we're doing at the moment um, here is really about how do we get our money coming through. So the challenge we know to have that balanced lifestyle. Yep. And obviously we've all got an income stream that we have, whether it's most of us or most people it's a wage mm-hmm. and that's their, they've only got the one income stream. Mm. And and when you mean one, if it's, you know, husband and wife, well, that's two yeah, income depends. streams. But to me that's still one. Yeah, it depends what they've income. designed mm. for their life, whether they're at that point of thinking about what you're getting to right mm. here. So if you're earning a wage, do you dictate how much you get paid or does somebody else do that? Um, it's a, a, a two-way street mm-hmm. in my opinion. And? Because part of it's up to you really. Yeah. Because you can, you can choose where you want to work, who you want to work for. Yep. You can, in this current environment, people can almost pick their wage. Partly if they yeah, want to. Because we've got full employment or what they think and is full employment. And then you can work with your employer to work out how much more you can earn. Hmm. So that's another thing. That is another so thing. So it's a mutual relationship there. It is. It is, absolutely. But a lot of people don't ask for pay mm. rises and, and do things like that. Um, but at the end of the day is we have, let's say we have a fixed income, which mm. is our wage. So yep. we exchange our time for money. We do 40 hours, mm. 30 hours, whatever that is. And as a family, a family unit, husband and wife or, you know, Two partners, should I be woke and just say two people? Two people. Um, like that. Uh, anyway, we've got two people in bringing income into a family mm. um, and then obviously that income then has got to be distributed to expenses mm-hmm. um, for living, for food, shelter, all the things that you do. Well, pay and, yourself first. And No, well, that's just, you, you're talking about the next podcast here. <laughs> so stop jumping ahead on me, will you? The next part is obviously we all we, if we're earning an income, then when we're paying superannuation. Well, mm. this is really how most people do stuff. It's I get a wage. Mm. Some of it goes into superannuation, which I don't even see because my employer does that yep. at whatever rate that is, nine, ten, eleven percent. I I never know what it is. What's mm. the rate nowadays? I think it's eleven now. Is, is it? it? I don't, I don't know. know. Actually, it was ten. It was nine it for was a long time. I think it went up to nine point five or ten. And it's I don't slowly even track going that up. But time. basically, that's it. So, and from what mm. we know, with most households, the cash comes in the door in theory, mm. what goes into a bank account from your employer. What goes into your bank account is what people spend. Mm. Most people spend all of what comes in or most of what comes in and obviously there's only a bit going into our into our compulsory yep. super and very few people look at investing at all. They might have a bit of a bank account which builds up a little bit of money but then that mm. funds Well, that's lifestyle. because a lot of people have got a big mortgage and they're dealing with that. But that's a choice. Yeah, it is a choice. So, that is a choice mm. for people to to do that, but whatever that is, that's you know your mortgage is part of your expenses. So it's your you know rent, it's your mortgage, it's clothes, it's makeup, it's entertainment, it's everything in there. But most people we know still today in Australia, we know most people can't live mm. for you know less. It's less than three weeks without mm. a wage. It's less than three weeks for the majority of people. And and I've always been the the thinking if I can't live for six months without having a, a wage, then... Yeah, you've got to have a war chest. It's mm. just not a good. buffer. You know, mm-hmm. and that's the thing is most people don't think about that. And then some people say to me, well, Dale, that's great for you to say. And it's like, well, no, that's what I've always thought, mm. even when I didn't have money, you know, because yep. um, people listening to this will know my story. Um, but I've never met anybody that I can't help free up capital. Mm. It's just a matter of choice. Is do you choose to go to all these concerts and buy expensive cars and go on holidays, blah, 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 or do you choose to help fund your future lifestyle? Mm-hmm. But most people don't get to the investment part of this whole thing and the challenge there. So yep. basically the bigger your income stream is, but if you're trading your time for money, then there's only a limited amount of time you've got to in a, in a day but also in your life that you can do that with. Mm-hmm. So we, we're limited to that and obviously we do get a lot of, we, we get a lot of tradies, don't we, and people mm. like that 
who are going, I don't want to be crawling under houses or in ceilings or lifting heavy things, you know, and, and they're, they're in their 25, 30, 35. Mm, don't want to do the, it forever. And mm. they, they call us and they go, can you teach me about the stock market so mm. I don't have to get to 55 and 60? But I'm seeing these older traders, they're just broken. Yeah. You know, and then they've got not much of a great lifestyle because their health is so bad. Mm. So, but anyway, so do you want to go through this? We're going to talk about average weekly wages just to show people the reality. But it's not, can I just say one yeah. more thing? Because it's not just whether their job is doing that to them. It's also, um, you know, they there's a lot of, mm -hmm. so for example, a lot of tradies that I'm seeing in the building industry are starting to think, well, I want to do it for myself, not just be building for other people. Building houses for themselves, mm. but how do they do that? Well, that's about knowing knowing what they have to do and knowing how to get the funding and all of that. Mm. Mm. That's true, but I'm saying that we do get a lot of people who are people that work on tools, mm. basically mainly men, um, that they see mm. these people that are 55, Well, 60, some of them are, I've worked with have had accidents um, and then they have to do something. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. The ones that want to build for themselves and do developments for themselves, mm. they're the smarter ones because they're building their wealth on the side mm. as well yep. um, from that point of view. But but what we want to go through is really just give people a reality check right now. So yep. do, you, do you want to start that one off? Okay, so what you've done here is you've got an average weekly wage, a full-time wage yep. that equates to around 93860 per annum. So that's what the ABS says Yep. is the average weekly wage full-time. Mm. So people yep. working full-time, okay. about $1,800, I think, a week, um, roughly. The RBA then says, okay, well, let's look at all employees. Mm. So full-time, part-time, all of that sort of stuff. And so their average weekly wage is what? 71552 so per annum. It's about 22000 less mm. um, if you're not working full-time, um, which is about $1,360, $76 a week, roughly, on that. So this is what the ABS is coming out. So now let's look at the – so people would be earning, in theory, mm. most of the people here will, will either be above or below that. We're just talking about the average. Yep. But if the average wage is 71000 per person, mm. then they go to retire and if they're thinking, well, the pension's going to help them, mm. to me they're sadly out of luck, you know, because you're going to have a big drop. So – the single pension is $1,064 per fortnight or $27,000 per Gee. annum. So how do you go from an average of 71000 or full-time wage of 93 down to And what to if they didn't own a home? Like a, there's a lot of di – the divorce rate's high, so if you Correct. end up with a single But why is person, the divorce rate high? Pressure. I think there's a lot of pressure on people. Pressure. Money mm. is the number one reason why couples break up. Mm. And I've talked to a few young people – you know, in their thirties, and they're just there. You know, they've been married. You know, mm. late twenties, got married, and all these pressures that we're seeing at the moment. And there's a lot of issues going mm. on, and a lot of mental health issues as well as relationship issues. But if you don't take away the money worries, it's they'd mm. they'd be together and they'd be happy and healthy. So how do we do that? But a single pension, twenty seven thousand dollars. It's nothing. Mm. That's just look. How do you like? Geez, how do you live on that? Well, we're, we're not factoring into that mm. the, the discounts that retired people get for oh, gas, electricity, yeah, but that's not registration. A well, you, we haven't worked it out, so we can't just say it's that. It's still not going to be a lot, like $27,000. Medical, if, medical's huge, yeah. the, the benefits that they get on the medical side too. If you if you spend $200 a week on food, mm. how much is that times well, 52 A single weeks? person's not going to spend $200 a week on food. Well, they might. No, no. No. They have steak and oh, jeez, you know, lobster and <laughs> yeah, some okay, of those. Anyway, right. But the couple's pension is forty-one thousand, so that's a little bit better. But it's still an existence in my book. Sixteen hundred dollars a fortnight. So if you're paying a mortgage, and oh, the couple's rent, pension's gone up, has it? Yeah, I thought it was thirty something. That's no, forty-one. I got these off the ABS okay. website or whoever the government website is. But forty-one thousand for yep. a couple. If you mm. are paying rent, then how do you live? Mm. If you're paying a mortgage, then how do you live just on a pension? Do they get rental assistance on top of that or is that the whole thing? Well, that's what it says on the ABS mm. website. You're asking lots of detail. I so, not like to know. I know you like to know detail. But anyway, that's what I got off. The, but I'm just, what I'm saying is that I'm highlighting that people are mm. on an existence. I couldn't live on 41000 mm. at all. Yep. Um, you know. Now, interesting fact, a lot of people think, I, and I know a lot of people tell me, oh, you know, I was, how are you going to retire? And they go, oh, look, I've been at my super and pension. So they put the pension as their retirement plan. Mm. And 
I keep saying to them, I say to these people, do you know the pension was never, ever intended as a retirement plan? Yes. It was a safety net in case you lived longer than than the average age mm. so that you actually could have some food. Yeah. It, it's a safety net. It wasn't a retirement plan because when the pension was launched, um, which was so like- Actually, can we? I, something just came to me then. Okay. So was I it was it people was it risk. yeah was it people deciding that or was it the because the financial industry would have started to grow and then there were financial mm-hmm. advisors a lot more financial advisors started to but, pop out of the woodwork right mm-hmm. so has it been the financial advisors that have helped they have that pushed that put you know yeah and made the people, industry's pushed it everybody they're all pushing it saying oh well da 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 you have the pension you know. But we came out with compulsory superannuation back mm. in the mid eighties, roughly, or roughly mid to late eighties, mm. or something. I think it was. But when the pension was launched, it was sixty percent of the average wage. Mm. Today, it's thirty eight percent. Yeah. So the and, difference. And why I've highlighted this is because when the government brought out the pension back in, I think. Well, it we've was, got superannuation. Think, coming. No, but I understand mm. that. But when they brought the pension out in, I think it was the sixties or something like mm. that. I can't remember exactly. Somebody will know that's listening. It was a safety net. That's it. It wasn't mm. a retirement plan. So now it's thirty eight percent. Look, I remember hearing that and the government down, the actually way. told people, "Don't worry, as part of an they election did. promise, In we'll take care of you. Yeah, um, just you know, keep working, and you'll be able to retire on a pension, they, and we'll look after you." So that that was actually sold to them as so you're part of the an election lied to us. campaign. That doesn't ever happen, does it? <laughs> Yeah, mm. Mm. they did. To me, what I'm why I'm highlighting this is saying if you're relying on a pension as part of your retirement plan, then you need a reality check, mm. um, and you need an attitude adjustment, and we need to have a chat um, because it shouldn't be. You shouldn't be relying on a pension. Or you but hang on a minute. There's mm-hmm. some people that, by circumstance, have got into that situation. Correct, but that that's you, not the majority. Yeah, you know, if you have, you know, this. Let's say you're in a car accident, blah blah blah, whatever, and, and you get a bit mm. of a payout, but nothing much. But you can't work, or you have. Oh, not just that. Like you know, I mean, my, I remember Mum sitting mm. me down and she showed me these um, mm. shows and these women, and because you, you're mm. forgetting, because you're looking at it from a man's point of view, right? So that's why I'm here. Okay. Because is that why women, you're here? I had never thought about that. Right, women, women didn't even couldn't even get a loan. Yeah, but that was back before, you know, 70, prior 60s, you know, in the 60s, 60s, in, 50s, in right. late sixties, they did, started working on the pill. They developed the pill, and I it know wasn't all until that. all yeah. that came so in. So, what are you getting at? What I'm saying is, women haven't had that long to to actually be able to have their own bank accounts, be able to get loans, be able to do any investments. So, still, what are you saying? So, what I'm saying is, the older people who are approaching retirement or in retirement now are in that category. No, they're not. Yes, they are. No, that's, they're not. Somebody that's who's 50 60 years ago was born in the 60s and women 50, could have bank I'm accounts I'm talking back 50 then. years ago, 50, you know. 50, women had be... bank accounts back 50 years ago. Well, women were working 50 years ago. My just, mother was working 50 years ago. Well, I'm just saying. My mother had a bank account and a credit card. People were working. I'm not saying they weren't working. They were yeah. working. No, but, but in, the, in the 50s and 60s you saw more families with mum looking after the kids weren't, weren't working. So it was That's more right. just dad working. So I understand that. But they couldn't even get – look, there was a lot of situations where they wouldn't even get the jobs. They wouldn't get the money Possibly. that was going. But the, I, my mum never had trouble getting jobs. Jobs. I'm talking – now this is nothing against your mum, but yeah. I'm talking about what sort of jobs and how did they pay. You yeah, know, I understand on. that too. Women weren't getting paid. Right, I'm, just, I'm not saying women uh, weren't uh, – were fairly paid back all then, you know. Mm. I'm not saying that, but all I'm saying is is people that treat the the pension as a retirement mm. vehicle are sadly They're going to be left behind. They're going to be left behind and that's yep. what I'm saying. So it doesn't matter whether you're uh, a young girl at 18 just going into the And what you're saying is don't man, settle. Don't settle for that because yep. you're going to struggle. When you hit 60, 65, 70, whenever you decide to retire, mm. you're going to be eating the soup a lot. Yes. You know? I um, like soup, actually. I do like soup. But it's you're really not, healthy. <laughs> you're going to be making choices that you probably don't want to make. Exactly. Because you not don't have the money coming in. So mm. the earlier you make that decision. You know, and I agree with everything that you talked about with, you know, women back in the 50s, 60s, and even into the 70s. Mm. You know, and it's only been more, I suppose, the last couple of decades, women are being paid more fairly. And I think, mm. you know, if you're doing the same job as a man, then you paid the same. Simple. Mm. There's, there's no question about that, you know. But, you know, that takes us off the subject, so to speak. So I 100% agree with you. But right now I'm just saying that people need to not think of the pension as – I wouldn't yeah, even put yeah, the pension I in your thinking you. as a retirement mm. plan. 
So yeah. if, if that's in your head and you're thinking, oh, well, I'll have super, I might have an investment property and then I'll have the pension, get pension right out of your head. Mm. Plan to me, that's just, just your, your play money. Oh, you wouldn't even qualify for that. Well, I don't even qualify. I'll, I'll never property. get a pension in my life. You know, the government says, well, Dale, you don't need it. Mm. Um, but, you know, to me, I would plan that to be. But it is good that it's there. Like mm. I don't want to, you know, Put it is. It's a safety it's, net, and to me, yeah. I, I treat my superannuation as is is my play money. Mm. You know, I'll be retiring on on my investments, not my superannuation. Yeah, my superannuation is my play it. money. Mm. So I've taken it one step further, saying, "Well, it'll fund my holidays, or it'll yeah, fund because it. you've always been skeptical about super, haven't you? I think super's crap. Mm. The way, well, I saw it's good, but it's crap. The way because we're constantly changing the laws and all sorts of other stuff on it. I think the way the government set it up and the industry run it. It's just BS, mm. you know. It's just it really is BS the way that they run the super scheme, because it's more about the big industry making more and more and more and more money, mm. and they're pillaging our super. Like you, there's more more and more things coming well, out. What every they're day. allowing to happen and in our stock market is real concern to me because a lot of people's yeah. money is in superannuation Correct. in the stock market, Correct. and they're allowing that. Correct. What's I don't trust on? the government not getting their hands mm. on their, on my superannuation. I don't trust the big industry about getting their hands on my super. So I don't. I'd whilst I have a self-managed super fund and I invest through that because mm. I have to because I get the superannuation from a wage going into it, mm. but my wealth is not in super. Mm. It, it, and I think that's another step on from what we're talking about with these people or with everybody at the moment. Okay, Today so is more about, can I, can I say normal people because I think I'm a little bit I don't abnormal. think you should use that word. More normal. Okay. So they're not normal. I don't think you should. So everyday Australians, should I say that? Everyday Australians. All right, I'm allowed to get away with that, guys. Aussies. Okay. All right, so let's go if on. You, I'm going to talk about, I'm to still talking about the reality. So in the reality, if you earn over $65,000, you yeah. earn more than 50% of all workers. Mm -hmm. That's a scary figure. Yep. Okay. 50, you know, 50% so of all workers and, you, and you're only earning 65000 If you earn $100,000, then you earn more than 75% mm. of all workers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Next step. We need to look at if you're going to retire on a fifty thousand dollar income, because they say you know you with if you retire, then you're probably going to be spending about seventy five percent of your mm. normal wage. Or well, your prior wage. they say two thirds. Two thirds, so, or roughly. Mm. So sixty five thousand dollars is half of the people. Mm. Okay, so fifty thousand dollars is roughly about that. Give mm. or take a few thousand on that one. But assuming a five percent rate of return, that means you need a million dollars in cash yep. to get sixty to fifty thousand dollars. But obviously, there's superannuation in mm. there. What you might. I'm be glad that in. you put a five percent rate of return in there. Just, just well, I do because that's what the industry. Even today on the morning mm. show, they were you know, had the people there talking about um, returns on superannuation and things like that. And they'll, it, all the assumptions around five percent. Mm. And it's like, well, f mm, you know, people doing our course can do more than five percent. Yeah. You know, you can get five percent dividend yield out of stocks. Well, that's yeah. I mean, the average so, dividend's been so going up because the miners are paying not, more now. Five percent's not a you know mm. a, a, a blindingly high rate of return mm. on your money. So you know, but you do need a million dollars to have fifty thousand dollars in income coming mm -hmm. through. Okay, but to retire on sixty five thousand dollars in income, which is what fifty percent of people are retiring on. That means you need $1.3 million mm. in cash. So how are you going to get that? Yep. So that's what we want to teach people about, you know, in this podcast and in the next podcast. So how are you going to get, if you're not thinking about having at least a million dollars now to retire on, and but you want that and you want the lifestyle, the second question is, well, then how do you do that? And that's Look, the second I think podcast. most people, mm -hmm. if they don't do it now, they're mm -hmm. actually aware that they can do it through shares and property. Most people are aware they can do it. Most people problem. are aware they can, but whether they can, whether they know. actually do it or not, is another thing. It's Why don't they do it? I really don't understand it. No, you you must understand it. But I don't understand why they don't do it. What, why do you? Because think? everybody that I know mm -hmm. does it. Everybody you know. So you travel in different circles than some people. Well, look, I'm just saying that. Well, actually, there are two people I know who don't do it. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. most of the people I know do it. I know a lot of people that don't do it. Yeah. But even even people who have never thought about buying property in the mm. last, I guess, you know, five years or so, I've seen people go out and mm. purchase a property. It's mm. just been interesting to watch. It has been interesting to watch. But again, at the day, a lot of people who don't do it say, um, it looks too hard mm. or um, I don't it's know It's actually where to start. a lot easier it's than they think. It's a lot think. easier than they think, you know. Yeah. It's 
seriously a lot easier. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look, people have, um, you know, generations gone, mm. they were made to be fearful of it, a lot of them. And I don't know why. I think it was Correct. the debt, the whole debt, thinking of debt and um, talks. They would get, In the media, they would talk about yeah. how people trash places. Instead of focusing on what yeah, they that's could a small make, percentage. Like I had some people say to me, yeah. oh, "I can't." I, I had the but other the months. media is always about the negative. I know, right? I and mean, that's so, the, that's what I mean. It's this crap that comes out of and the media. People didn't have the ability to do the research that they can today. Yeah, I had somebody the other week said to me, "You know, I said, yeah, you get an investment property.' Oh, I don't want an investment property. I go, why not? I go, oh, people trash your house. Mm. I said, well, a lot of BS. Yep, and I'm like. Well, oh no, they do this, and you got all the trouble with tenants. I said, mate, I've been renting prices for Is over that 30 still years. Being talked I've about? never, I've mm. never had anybody ever trash a house that mm. I've had an investment, any investment properties, never. And you can get insurance for it anyway. Yeah, just in case. And you know, I've never had any. Problems You've got with a re- really good. So we're agent. talking about the point zero 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 something of a percent of people, but yeah. just that you know the current affairs of this world go. Oh, well, these landlords, they had yeah. their houses being trashed and blah blah blah. There's mm. very few people. So you probably bought the house in the wrong area anyway. Probably. Now, a lot of a big myth that people have is that I don't earn enough. And mm-hmm. they say, oh, I don't earn enough to invest. Mm. That's another lot of BS. True. To me, in, to me, what you earn doesn't necessarily mean you'll create wealth. So mm. some of the richest people, or sorry, the people that are getting paid the most mm. yep. are the poorest people I've seen. Well, when you say poor, in terms of their ability to save, you mean? Yeah. Invest. Yeah. Not their spending. Some of the people with the highest wages that I've seen are just terrible at this stuff. Mm. And people go, how? They're the smart ones because they're mm. making a lot of money. No, they've just got a university degree that allows them to be paid two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars mm. Doesn't mean they're wealthy because mm. some of those people just spend too much. True. Um, and I think, you know, I've said it on this podcast before, you know, back in the 90s I had this very, very successful surgeon in my in my office in the early 90s, I said, why are you here? Because he was earning, I think he was earning somewhere around half a million dollars a year plus in that sort of bracket. And that's a lot in those days. There's a lot in those days. Mm. I said, why are you here? You know, I'm going to help you work out what your financial situation is and help you retire and everything else. He goes, Dale, he said, I can't afford to not work. Mm. I said, how? <laughs> and he goes, my wife spends too much, my kids spend too much, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I said, well, you have to have some decisions to make, don't mm. you? Because if you want to retire, so, but I've met people on pensions that are saving and investing. Yeah. You know, That's amazing. and my mum used to do that. And I know your mum used to save and, you know, she was a good budget and taught you a lot of financial stuff. Mm. But I've seen a lot of people who are on low incomes create big investment portfolios because mm. you don't have all the bullshit of having to have a Ferrari or Gucci <laughs> suits and, you know, Rolex watches and stuff like that to try and keep up with the Joneses. So, if you think that you don't earn enough so that to, that will allow you to build wealth and invest, then I, that's another thing mm. we need to have a chat about seriously. Yeah. It's another Got attitude a Dale, adjustment. A Dale reality well, check. Well, it is. I never met anybody. Mm. Out of seeing you know, 100 people in my office year in, year out, I never met anybody. We I couldn't help them free up capital to invest. Mm. And, you know, people go, oh, but, you know, you don't know my lifestyle. And I, but all I'm saying is it needs to, for some people, it is a tough decision needs to be made of exactly where you're putting your money. Mm. But once we get the budgeting sorting out and the, and the money allocation sorting out, creating wealth is easy for everybody. Mm. And, again, it's just about making the right decisions. Yep. Too often people go, oh, okay, I'll just go and buy another Magnum at the shop or a mm. six-pack of beer and I'll forget about it. You drown my sorrows in my beer and my Magnums. Yep. I don't know you it's love It's not going to help the stomach. Not gonna I help know you stomach. like the beer and Magnums. That wasn't about so me. You, so the amount you have has no relation, or amount you earn has no relation to creating wealth. It's how you approach your wealth creation that does. Mm. And that's really what we're trying to say to people. And, you know, to me, I want to go into now what the objective is a little bit more. So we just talked a bit about the reality and what people are doing and how they should be relying on the pension and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. you want to start taking us through the, obje- the objective that people should be having. Yeah, so the objective is to accumulate enough assets that will provide sufficient income for you in retirement. Mm. And all the way along have a nice lifestyle. That's right. And have that balanced lifestyle that we talked about before so that you're not starving yourself just Mm. so you can retire. Mm. It's about having that, you know, a, a form of lifestyle now but also planning for that future lifestyle. Yeah, I think that one of the things that really hit some of the students who Mm. do our courses is 
when we talk about ac- them actually setting their goals for their, their future and where they want to yeah. be and actually having a vision of that life and then writing it down, you have to documenting it. it. Yeah. Do most do people, or you know, in your opinion, do you think people um, underdo what they think they can do or overdo it? Depends on the person. Because we know it's a bit of a balanced answer, isn't well, it? Well, we know that differs because I mean everybody has a different I know personality. It differs, but I'm just asking egos your are different. Opinion. Do you think they generally well then don't don't sort of stretch themselves enough, or they you know they think oh well I'm never going to get to there, so I want to go set my goals here, or do no, they I mean, overdo that? I I I know, I know a lot of people who do stretch themselves quite I a lot know. in terms of that. So you're going to be very politically and you know, no you're look be grey, I think aren't you? I think if people will raised with Mm -hmm. that mindset Mm -hmm. at a younger age and this is what we need to be thinking about for current generations, you know, in their 20s and in their teens, to be actually preparing them and helping them to set that mindset up so that they Mm -hmm. know what's possible but it's not measured by what we're saying today. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everything that we're saying here is great but I'm talking from a parent's point of view. Mm. Whatever you think is right in your mind is probably not you know, it might be 60% right, you know what I'm saying? But it, yeah. it's just your mindset, your way of looking at things. It may help them, but you still need to gather things mm-hmm. from around you and yeah. information from around you to That's help that young person build the way they're going to look at things. I'll let you get away with that. That's mm. fine. I mean, at the end of the day, it's often people don't start because they don't know where or how. Mm. You know, and to me, once you learn where and how, it's easy. Well, these started. days with so much information online, all you have to do is go and get a couple of calculators. You do. From mm. the Money Smart website or yeah. and any web Essex financial Money website. website. Yeah. And and just start running some numbers. Oh. It's as simple as that's yes. a good starting point. Yes, yesterday I was on LinkedIn because we have to have LinkedIn and we're posting stuff. One of our experts is obviously one of my LinkedIn connections, um, a guy called Aaron, Aaron Nanini, yep. who's a money coach. Mm. He's written a book called Cash Uncomplicated. Great, Great book. book. Really, mm. really good book. He had a post and he goes, when do you think we should start teaching children about money? Mm. And we had he had other people saying, oh, when they start, you know, primary school, mm. et cetera, or when they're doing this. And, and, and I just made the comment. I said, during pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, because that's, <laughs> that's when you should start. Because I, I know when, you know, with, when, with your baby, you were playing music and you were doing all sorts yeah. of things, talking to your baby. Perfect time to start. Mm. Get them to have it right then. And as soon as, the, as soon as you have that baby, they should be learning about money. Well, when the child's and, born, all yeah, the positive. money goes into a bank account yeah. so from that point on. And then there's a weekly amount that's going into an account. Correct. Just any amount. It doesn't matter what it is, what it just is, something. Just keep putting it in. So that then when the child gets to an age where they can understand, then you can explain to them what you've actually created for yeah. them and yep. what you want them to keep doing. Perfect. See, mm. you already did it. See, you mm. did what I said. That's right. I mean, he came back with laugh, you know, laughing, and but he thought it was a good idea. Because it is <laughs> to me. It's like, when do you start? Yesterday is the answer. Well, when do they get to an age where they can start talking? Then you can get little cash registers and all sorts of things and yeah. banks, bank accounts. That's you know, what you we need to teach them. Have a bank and then show them going to the bank to make make a deposit, just pl- make a game out of it yeah, when like they're really it. little. All right. Mm. So anyway, the objective is to accumulate <laughs> enough assets that we're going to have a good retirement pretty much. So yep. so here's our chart there. We're looking at the income. So the income, the objective is your income is going to be coming from your superannuation and your investments. Mm. And the people who are seeing this slide will notice we don't have the pension on there or the government pension. We Great. only have superannuation and investments yep. because that's then going to fund your lifestyle, mm. it's going to fund, fund your expenses. Now, the blue circle in the middle, which is your income, the, the goal is to make that big circle, that circle as big as you possibly can, mm. you know, and to get that as big as you possibly can, that means you need to have your investments in your super mm-hmm. as big as you possibly can, which means we need to plan for all of that. Because right. um, that way I would rather have more money to fund my expenses and my lifestyle than I actually need. It's you plan to overshoot than undershoot. So do you think people should have more money coming from their super or more money coming from investments? Me personally, investments. Mm, me too. Because I just do not trust the government, what mm. they're going to do with super. Um, and I think it was one, between I think 1990 and 2000, I think there was like a thousand changes to super. Like mm. they're, they're constantly making changes to super. Now they're talking about taxing super again. If you've got more than $2 million or whatever it is, they're going to raise the tax on super. But then they tell you, hey, they hate hate the pension because they've got to keep funding the pension. I mean, the, 
the so the amount of budget that goes into social welfare is huge. Mm. And you'd think the government would be trying to cut encourage more people to be self sufficient in retirement because mm. it would drop that. But then mm, I don't know. I'd rather be self sufficient. And that's just me. And I know mm. it's just not one say just me. I know there's a lot of people like me because you're like yep. me like that. Because yeah. I don't want to have to be relying on the government for anything no. ever in my whole life. And I never have, mm. you know, other than when I was, you know, young and, you know, we, we grew up on that pension because, you know, people know my story. If you don't keep listening to podcasts, you'll pick it up on one of them. But I don't okay, want to so rely on anybody for my lifestyle. Yes. That's think, what I'm talking about. So, so super mm. is going to be part of it. Yeah. But mo when people are sitting down to look at how much they can retire on, people are thinking about their super and thinking what that will be worth and that's yeah. one side of it. I you don't have a problem with that. The if tax they benefits are pretty good to put in terms at of the putting moment, money it is, yeah, super. It is. But yeah. how many times have you heard retirees going, well, the government, well, you mentioned in other podcasts, remember in 2007 or eight, where government said if you want to sell an investment property, put it, put it into your superannuation mm. You can do that and there's no penalties mm. and we'll let you put yeah, all this money the market in, just before the GFC. Mm. And that just screwed a whole lot of retirees, Did. didn't it? Didn't it? Because the government encouraged them to do that and mm. then they they really shot their superannuation down. Um, Hang on. They didn't shoot the superannuation down. It was – the cycles in the market that were it going did, to happen, which the government they, would have had to have some idea about that was coming. But not only that, the fact that we allow hedge funds and all sorts of big funds to come in and short our market, yep. that's knowing that people have their money in superannuation Correct. to me is just completely wrong. Correct. Like, that's why I don't trust the government. I don't mm. care who's in government, whether they're Liberal, Labor or Clive Palmer or Pauline Hanson or... You know, Zoe the Clown. Yeah. You know, whoever's in government, I don't trust them because yeah, for a whole Look, lot of reasons. I mean, I think there's a lot of people in government who are trying to do the right thing and do yeah. some great things for this country. So, I'm, And they must work extremely hard. Some people are. And yeah. not necessarily get the kudos for what they're doing. So yeah, it's never one-sided and I wouldn't like to make a generalisation. We generally know the, mas the masses no, are always wrong. I just said so don't make the a generalisation. So overgeneralise <laughs> it. But we do know the masses are generally wrong. So whatever The, the masses, masses are thinking. going with, with whatever the wave is at the time, aren't Correct. they? Correct, mm. which is generally led by propaganda and BS. But anyway, yeah. that's a whole other podcast. So the golden rules to creating wealth. These, these are in my first book. Oh. Yeah. Spend less than you earn. Yeah. Mm. So so these came out, I put those in my first book, How to Beat the Manage Funds by 20%. That's a simple one. That's a simple one. So, you so invest wisely. Invest wisely. We're going to talk about that. Leave it alone. And we're going to talk about that as well. Don't and touch. I know people, People. I rarely meet people that do all three. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they might do one, Yep. Um, but they generally don't do three. I so know. getting investments actually helps you to leave it alone, particularly property. I think that's why... Mm. Property can be so good for people. Yeah. Shares, they can still sell them. They, they, you know, it's quite liquid, so they can at any m moment decide to sell some shares and take the cash. Whereas well, they do. It's with like an investment property, it's not that easy. They're more likely to keep building it. So while shares are really good for like starting out and helping you generate that mm. extra income and building your wealth, and then you can fund the property Correct. with that. Yeah, um, we'll talk a bit about the that. The temptations as we go on. there for a lot of people to sell. Yeah, a lot of that's in the second podcast. We're going to talk about mm. how to do things and set it all up and, and work on that. I'm just talking about things like it's like it's like superannuation with the COVID mm. thing, and the government said you can take ten thousand dollars now and ten thousand dollars another ten thousand. I thought it was the most poor decision the government ever did because mm. they let anybody do that. Yep. And to me, if you lost your job, I understand that one. Mm. If you were going to lose your house because you didn't, you weren't working. Yeah, to me, that's I, un I understand that. But if you're working and you're getting income and just to be able to take ten grand out of your super, I thought mm. that was a crap decision yeah. by the government because it the, the ramification of the compounding effect on that on oh, somebody's retirement huge. is huge. Mm. And we'll go into some of that and show people some of that sort Great. of stuff. So again, spend less than you end. Golden rule number one. Golden rule two. Invest wisely. Golden rule number three. Leave it alone. Mm. Let it grow and compound because as Einstein said, that's the fourth one, seventh, eighth wonder of the world or whatever it is. Yeah, thinking mm. about that spending less than you earn, you, earn, mm. you know, th there was a while, a stage there where the credit card companies were coming out and offering people all these incentives, which they still do to, they do. to an extent, but yeah. they're not allowed to do it in the same way that they used to do it. Oh, yeah. And so people were getting, you know, bigger and bigger um, credit card I, they used to just keep going up and up and up and up. Yeah, and up. so it's about thinking about well, 
spend less than you earn will think seriously about how big that limit on your credit card should be given mm. what you're earning. Yeah, and I mean, I know the statistics. You know, the average Australian has 2.5 credit cards, mm. personal ones. Yep. You know, some people have four and five credit cards. I've wow. Got, I've got one. Mm, me too. Mm. You know, and it's like, and that's the thing is, is this is leads into the statement that we've got um, here. It's like, you know, there's one, one of the quotes we've said, you know, um, you know, what a wise man does in the start, a fool does in the end, mm. you know, and people get multiple credit cards and they realize that's making them broke. Yes. So, but what do rich people do? What people who are financially secure do? They have one credit card. Mm. Uh, and this quote is a, a, a guy was called, um, Albert E. N. Gray. And his quote, it's, it's from the book, the common denominator of success. And I love this book. It's mm. not a big book and it's only one of the books I've read, not like a book I've read. Um, it's Beautiful yeah, book. I think if, you gave that to me years ago. I did. Mm. It's called The Common Denominator of Success and it's 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 an oldish book, mm. but it's brilliant. If you haven't ever, I've still got it. I've got the I've got an actual printout of it yeah. as well because I kept it handy because mm. I you know, I think I gave the mm. book that I got away to someone else and but I I wanted to keep bits of it, so I kept bits of copies of bits of it that were really important. Yeah, and I know we see lots of quotes and people re quoting other quotes that are the same as sort of an old one, but mm. this one, as I said, is probably out of the 40s or 50s. And Albert Gray says, the secret of success of every man, or should we say person nowadays, <laughs> um, or non-gender binding specific Just, stuff like that. Yep, that's anyway, respectful. That's respectful. Yes, I've never, Everybody's entitled to their life. Yeah, they want to. Okay, every man. So we're not going to say man anymore, okay? Every, the, success, every person. the secret of success of every man who has ever been successful lies in the fact that he formed the habit of doing things that failures don't like to do. Mm. And it's such a powerful statement mm -hmm. um, in that not everybody likes to budget. Not everybody wants to make better investing decisions. Not everybody wants to um, go to work. Mm. And they make different decisions, but then they can't have expectations if they're making decisions that aren't getting them to where they'd like to be. If they're making those decisions to not go to work or they're making decisions to go and, you know, get a housing loan that's way above what they can really afford or get a car that they shouldn't really be getting because they can't afford or a second or third mm. car that they shouldn't and a motorbike and a boat and a jet ski and mm. go on overseas holiday. Mm. You know, the successful person does what the others don't do. And this is one of those other quotes that I used to do say all the time, you know, I will do today what others won't so I can play tomorrow where others can't. Mm. And I've always lived my life like that and people go, well, geez, that restricts your lifestyle. I went, no, it does the opposite, just completely the opposite. Mm. I've always had a great lifestyle mm. and money that I needed but I was always making sure that I was doing what others didn't want to do because then I got what others mm. didn't have, you know. That's good. I and mean, so you had a lot of get. really important things that your mum taught you as well. It's not just my mum but it was also you knew you had a – Brilliant mum too, helping with that sort of stuff. And I think it starts from that early age and that's what I was saying. Yeah. You start while you're pregnant. Mm. <laughs> that's the way you should be doing it in my book. But it's also about having the right mentors and people around you. So, you know, don't get financial advice from somebody who has less money than you. Like mm. that's just a duh. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, that's really important. I, I did search high and low to find people who are doing certain things mm. in my 20s and um, I can tell you that I, I, I spent – I ended up, I think there was $10,000 that I blew mm -hmm. in the process of that because yeah. I got with some the wrong group, wrong couple group of, of people. you know, companies that were the, just the wrong, but it, you just have to, you have to learn from that, write it off write and it move off. on because you don't know mm. it when you're that age, you don't know the questions to ask, which is why some of the stuff that's online now mm. can be good. But it also, when I was thinking about it the other day with this stuff from chat GPT, yeah. And I was reading some of the comments that come back sometimes when you type things in. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, gosh, if people are believing that, we're, people are all going to be of the same, you know, mm -hmm. mindset and thinking of, that that's actually factual because it's coming from something that looks factual it because looks factual. it's a source. If it's written down, we believe it basically. That's right. And mm -hmm. I thought, oh, my goodness, you know, you just, so you just have to, mm -hmm. in the end I actually got opinions from multiple sources mm -hmm. To make sure that I had something that I thought was then credible. You've got to balance it out, don't you? Mm. Yeah. But if you go to the ASX shareholder surveys, which you can go to the ASX website, they do it every three or four mm. years, I think it is. And there's a section there, and I don't have it in front of me, I'm just quoting from memory, but you know, they always go, Where do you get your financial advice from? Mm. And most people, it's family or friends or 
chat forums and stuff like that. Yeah. All shit places to get financial advice from, unless your family are multimillionaires or Yeah, I was shocked talking to some 20, 20 somethings um, just recently and hearing that they're mm. getting this information from, and I'm not going to mention the website because that's giving it credit. Yeah. But from some of those websites that you and I both. We would laugh at them, actually, probably. Yeah, because people are putting opinions and giving information there, and mm. then other people are reading that. But it takes time, having you know, watching the the, the chat that appears, to realise that a lot of that stuff is contrived. It is, and mm. it's something. Just be careful where you get your information. Or the from. blind leading the blind. It is the blind leader, and that's where a lot of that stuff. Why I don't like chat forums. Mm. It's just simply because. I know people that are very successful. They don't have. They don't even want to be bothered with chat forums mm. because they're dealing with people that are not going to raise them up or um, not teach them or stimulate them. Mm. It's going to be the opposite. It's the, they want to suck their brain mm. dry. And you and I, myself, have experienced that numerous times when we've met people on the street or barbecues or. Functions. They just try and pull your brain dry, and then you see them next time. They've done nothing. Mm. So you just shut up. You just go, "What do you? Well, what do you do, Dale? Oh, I help people make money. Oh, how do you do that? Oh, we've got an education company. Oh, that's okay." And you walk mm. away because you just don't want to get into it with people. But to me, well, no. I mean, you, you don't walk away at the start, but no, you're saying you're polite and everything yeah. else, but you don't get into lots of detail because you know ninety percent of unless them, they start asking. And if they're really yeah. keen, then you work with them. Like mm. I had a coffee uh, a week ago with a young guy. I met a year ago and, you know, and he was quite keen of in stuff. And I said, look, if, you know, if you ever want to take me out for coffee, I'm, mm. I'm happy to, you know, successful people always have a coffee with you. And he rings me up and he said, oh, I want to take you out for coffee. And I knew what he meant. Mm. And we talked about a few things and he lost a quarter of a million dollars on Bitcoin and all sorts of other stuff, struggling with his relationship, blah, 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 got married, house, the whole bit. Mm. So it was just about having a coffee with him for an hour, hour and a half, two hours, I think it was, I can't remember, but just helping him saying, well, it might look black now, mm. but this is how you're going to get through it. Mm. And, you know, he went away much more buoyed and whatever else. But he wasn't asking me to teach him how to do that. He's yeah. actually, he said, look, I'm going to do your course probably in a few months. I've got to save up some money again. Mm. But the point was that he actually took the opportunity to find somebody who could help him, Great. not somebody who is, you know, in the same shit, basically, mm. if you know what I mean. You know, a lot yeah, of he's doing something positive to get himself out yeah. of it rather so, than correct. feeling so, stuck in it. Yeah, mm. and so that's the thing you need to do. So if you're not where you want to be, find somebody who is where they are, yeah. where you want talk to be, to and then talk to them and they'll find out and ask them mm. for coffee. And I'm not expecting everybody to no, ask you for email, coffee. Gosh, say, don't do that. It's not going to have coffee with a thousand people, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> but if the objective is to grow your retirement fund and investments to a point so they replace the income from your job, Mm. How do we do that? So that's really where the, that's the next part. One. That's really the next part that we've mm. got to go to. So to me is, wouldn't it be nice to work because you like to work, not because you have to work? Exactly. If you're making money out of all your investments and everything else, that's bringing all your income in, and mm. you don't need to work, that's mm. great. But you might want to work, and some people do that. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so, I agree. so how do we do? So areas to invest. Now we need to invest in growth assets that generate income because. If people have read my first book, How to Beat mm. the Managed Funds by 20%, you know I treat, to me, a quality investment is something that brings capital growth and income. If it doesn't yep. do both, then somebody else is making the money. Like your bank interest, you get interest from your bank account, but the bank's making the capital gain. It surprises gain. me how young people mm. in their teens, I ask questions, yeah. they, don't, they still don't, they don't, even when once they get to their teens, they don't know that's what's happening. No, they don't. Because they're not taught. So they're not taught. It's ridiculous that school's not explaining that. They don't. That's why we need to teach kids mm. in while the mum's pregnant, start yeah. teaching them. Mm. Because you've got to get into that habit because kids don't know how to use their credit cards and loans. They don't understand mm. compounding interest, all that sort of stuff. So we've got to invest in growth assets that generate income. So growth meaning capital gain that grows from what you paid for it to what it goes to a higher price like shares. We can also do investment property, both yep. residential and commercial investment property. Yeah, actually commercial is an interesting one because commercial has a different cycle to Correct. residential. And I've spoken to quite a few people actually who are mm. doing the commercial side of things now. Yeah. And it's not as hard as what one might think and it can actually be really lucrative if you get some of the right oh, properties. It is. I mean, one of the guys we've been talking with in Australia, a guy called Steve Police, he does commercial property, help people with all of that and he's – Interviews that we've had are brilliant. Polisi. Polisi, that's it. Steve Polisi, sorry. Steve 
Steve Polisi. So um, great. So if you haven't seen him on TalkingWealth.com, head over to TalkingWealth.com. You can get a free seven-day trial if you not a, haven't got the membership yet. So they had watched the videos from that. Um, you can also win a prize. Like we, yeah, we I really, a I really enjoyed the interviews with him mm. because it was just a different perspective and and a lot of mm. detail in the in the discussion as well about what to look for. What there to is, mm. yeah. I also brought down royalties and other passive income stream because you might have things like um, websites that you're a part of that you get clips of people buying things and it could be yeah. uh, what do they call them? Not loyalty programs and also there's other ones mm. that um, you know you see people on YouTube that they create a YouTube video and they've yep. got links and they'll get money from Amazon mm. for if somebody buys that product or they'll get a clip from somewhere. So that's, that's why I put other passive income streams into it because back nine years ago when we did this. Yeah, you couldn't do that. They weren't really around <laughs> back about nine years ago. So royalties could be you might have written a book, uh, an e-book, and you're selling it through mm. Apple Books or Amazon Books and you might okay. be getting a bit of a royalty out of that one. So they're the sort of – need to do but obviously we need to invest in assets to grow mm -hmm. and obviously a business shares and investment of properties yep. do that but royalties and everything else the bigger the more royalties you get they can grow as well see to me this is just really simple you it can is. keep it as simple or as make it as complicated as you like well you can i want to go through a couple more slides here and one these are slides and i forgot to put my glasses on these actually came from the moneysmart.gov.au website which is asics website it's the consumer part of ASIC's website. It's called moneysmart.gov.au. Um, this is how to invest, choose your investments. So you'll see that on your screen if you're watching the video on YouTube. So if you are listening to the podcast, head over to YouTube, uh, type in Wealth Within TV and you'll see this podcast. But it, ASIC talks about, or well, Money Smart says, uh, defensive investments are lower risk investments. They aim to provide income and protect capital invested. Defensive investments include cash and fixed interest investments. And they're typically used to meet short-term financial goals up to two years and diversify a portfolio. Do you want to go through both the two areas that they're talking about? Well, cash, I mean, is a really obvious one, isn't it? Mm. Um, so it talks about here that includes bank accounts and high interest savings accounts and term deposits. Most young people, as they're saving, their parents will, you hope, have introduced them to mm. looking for higher interest rates and looking for term deposits. Um, used to protect wealth and diversify a portfolio. I don't know about look, I don't know about that. Cash is just there on the side, you know, in, in look waiting for an investment. But that's to, what most people to do, isn't it? Though. They put their money in their cash or they mm. put it into a term deposit because yeah. they don't know what to do with investment. That's it. right. So this is sort of about it's saying the average return for cash over the last ten years is three percent per year. The risk is very low and the time frame they're saying short term, zero to three years. Yeah. So That's young people and a lot of retirees would yeah, put their money into cash. They would, but if I had a fair chunk of money in cash, mm. three years be itching is, to know what I'd be going. Do with I want to put that somewhere else. Mm. Where it's going to get a better return. Like mm. even just you know in the bank, you're going to get not the bank buying the bank. You're going to get a better return than being yeah, in the bank. Exactly. Um, and because the fixed interest, it's same, which is turned deposits, debentures, capital notes, bonds, government bonds. Corporate bonds, yep. They're not going to give you a great return. Well, Three well the thing with the fixed gassy. interest is it's not like you can sort of think, well, you know what cash mm -hmm. is? Cash is really the simplest it is. form of investment. If we're going to look at it like that, it's not just about defensive, it's about what's mm. simple for people. So cash is something people can understand. When we've talked to people about, um, you know, investing with us, mm. we've talked about cash and shares and it's very easy for people to understand. But we've seen portfolios that mm. have a huge mix of different assets mm. that when you ask the person, do you actually understand what that is? And they can't tell they you. They can't tell you. So somebody's actually put them into those products without, mm. maybe they've explained it and the person wasn't able to absorb it or, mm. but I, I would say, you know, years ago when, um, it, mm. it's not so much now because I think the, the industry's changed a lot. It in terms changed, of what yes. people, what financial advisors are doing Correct. with They're people. getting much, much better. I mean, some great mm. financial advisors out there. But can come, somebody create wealth from basically fixed interest or cash products? No, because you can see okay. that over the long term what the graph looks like yeah. and it's really flat. Because inflation is going to be sitting between 3 and 4%. So you really The only be, way that could change is if water. you had an experience like what occurred, I think it was in the, was it the 80s or early 90s where, yeah. mm. where the cash rate just took off. Like, yeah, that yeah. was the 90s. Which doesn't happen often. And which doesn't happen often. But, you know, for short periods of time, cash is okay, but mm. you need it in growth assets. And that's really why I brought this up because it is from the ASICS Money Smart website. The next one shows, he talks about, ASIC talks about growth investments and these 
It says growth investments are higher risk and offer higher potential return compared to defensive investments. They aim to give capital growth and some provide income, for example, dividends for shares or rent for property. But the price of growth investments can be volatile over short periods of time. So, yep. so what they're property, saying- Property yep. less so, obviously, than shares, yeah. but depends on the shares that you're looking at. But you and I both know that the reason they're saying this is to protect mm. people because- Yes. They know that at times there are big plunges in the market, whether Correct. it's property or shares, that yep. will happen at some point. So they're saying but property gets you, on average, 6.3% per year over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. and the risk is medium to high. Yep. Wow. I would have thought it would be low to medium. Mm, so did I. Medium mm. to high. Time frame, at least five years, and I would agree with that. Shares, it's saying 6.5%, just 0.2% higher. For Australian shares, they're saying the risk is high. But see, they've put property in one basket and that's what I and guess they, they they can only, well, like they, they can, can, but they did. Um, I guess property should be broken down into different groups so okay. that people can see, well, what is the, the medium to high and what is the medium risk in property, et cetera. Mm. But they put shares down as high risk and I don't agree with that. The top 20 shares aren't high risk. No. Even the top 50 aren't high risk. I'd say high, But, but it, it depends high what risk. high risk means. Because low risk oh. means that you, your capital is secure. Well, not necessarily low risk. But in a financial crisis, a financial is your cash going to be secure if there are banks closing, et cetera? That's correct. Well, the government have got mm. um, that strategy to protect people's money, so that's yeah. their buffer. But with property, property prices can plunge significantly. Yeah, I mean, we saw how much property prices fell during the GFC. We did. We saw when COVID hit what happened to property prices. Mm. There were pullbacks all the way along, not to the degree that the media said was going to occur. Yep. But so therefore that makes it, I think, mm. more medium, like you say. Yeah. So this, all that, these things I've just quoted from, or Jenny and I have quoted from, is from moneysmart.gov.au forward slash how to invest forward slash choose your investments. So that's Actually, we, you keep skipping your head and I want to pull you back again. Okay. So would you say that owning an investment property, mm. now this is really a, I don't want to be general I'll about take my it, right? Off this Let's one. say that serious. you do your research and you buy a house yeah. in an area that is you've done the research says the area is due to grow, but it's not a lower socioeconomic area. It's not the high end, it's somewhere in the middle. Yeah. And let's say that it's a certain distance mm -hmm. from any C B D, like a, the prescribed distance in terms of if yeah. you're buying property. 10 Ks, 15 Ks. Well, more than that, because these days 15 people 15 to 20 Ks. Say 30K to be okay, up right? to 30 Ks. Could be 30 Ks out from so the we're city. So sort of covering Frankston in Melbourne, are we? What it, you know, whatever. But we're, oh, I'm not we're, saying it's bad. I'm just saying. But but then you go and find the sub suburbs that are really good, okay. solid suburbs so that have performed here? well yep. over time. So what I'm getting at is if somebody goes and buys an investment property and they've done their research and they find yeah. it in a good area, maybe they've used a buyer's advocate to help yeah. them find a good one. And they've found that, okay, this is a really good one. It's for investment. Yep. Compared to someone who goes and buys a house in an area where they can afford, not necessarily in that range. Maybe they've gone out further. Maybe they're in that zone. It doesn't really matter. So what's higher risk? One that you're actually buying for yourself to live in or one that you're actually investing in that you've done your research on? Buying a home to live in. Yep. And why is Every that? Every time. Because you've got no help. That's right. You know, if you're buying an investment property, if you're buying it in an average suburb in, you know, average growth areas with, you know. Uh, now, we've never talked about this in this way, but the reason I want to uh, do that is because you have talked about always buy the investment, not the one to absolutely. live in, right? Absolutely. I was only talking about it the but, other day. But with we've the never guy. put it this way to people before about looking at what they say about property in terms of the risk of buying the asset. Mm -hmm. And then it depends what you've actually bought the property for as to yeah. this is what you and I are saying is now well, they say that buying your own home. The other week about Gen Zs, you know, they're all being pushed by our generation to yeah. buy a home. That's right. And they're buying out in the sticks because that's yeah. where they can afford. Mm. And I'm going, that's just dumb. Yep. Buy an investment property, have the tenant, the tax man pay for your house mm. and then live where you want to live. Mm -hmm. Don't live in the sticks because you don't want you know, you have to travel an hour and a half to get to work on a train. Yes. You know, live where you want to live and buy an investment property and have the tenant, the tax man pay for it. That's mm. what I've been pushing. Now, high risk investment mm. property would be in those mining areas. We saw well, they're, they're huge correct. You don't spikes in prices for those and then massive falls where the, mm. some of the properties were being sold at 10% of what they You're were always gonna get selling in the peak. 
developers doing that sort of stuff. And so for me, I guess what I'm just trying to highlight is they've said medium to high for property, which, yeah. you know, it's fair to say I think that because it depends on where you're buying the property and mm. but it could be it could be anything. You were saying low. It could be low, couldn't it, depending it's on the type of property low. you're it's, buying. Yeah, but the thing is, is what I was, I was saying on my podcast the other week, I was saying if you worry about your mortgage, then there's something wrong. You haven't set yourself up properly. And I know mm. that sounds can sound mean and uncaring, and I don't mean to be like that. But to me is we all have choices mm-hmm. of how much we borrow and when we do buy the house and how big the house is or where the house is and yeah. how much our loan repayment is. And then also we need to make decisions when we do get the loan as well, what if interest rates go up? What are we factoring in ourselves? So there's a lot of variables in all of that, but I have never once in my whole life ever been worried about paying my mortgage. Mm. Never, because it's yeah, about Yeah, so ultimately you want people decisions. to get to that point where they really can work But putting can work Gen out Zs under the pump to buy a home that they can't afford in an area they don't really want to be in, it's just, mm. just dumb. Most yep. of buy, they should be buying investment properties. Look, I'm sure a lot of parents wouldn't be putting that pressure on them to do that. It'd society be, is. It'd be, more, the it'd be more the individuals wanting, it's about the people that work having are doing a standard it of what the they want. Their, their friends are doing it to them. But look at what you and I saw before the GFC hit. We saw mm. all those young people buying those massive mansions. Correct. That well, was high be. risk. That was high risk. Wasn't it? But even the media do all the time. You've got to mm. buy a home. You know, Gen Zs can't buy a home because although the affordability for Gen Z, home affordability is going through the roof, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And the list goes on and the, the younger people are going, oh, I've got to buy a house now, yep. otherwise I'll miss out. Mm. I wonder how, you know, if people sat and did the numbers, slavery. right, so say they went and bought an investment property instead of their yeah. own home, mm. they look at get someone to look at their tax position at the end of it mm. and then think, okay, at the end of all this I'm going to have an extra whatever it is, 10000 a year or whatever the money is that's coming back to them. Mm. What can I do with that ten k that's going to give me the edge? And then they go and put that in the stock market, um, the money that they get back. We're going to talk about all that sort of stuff. Later. So that's going to be that would be an interesting exercise. We're, we're not a, we're going through a similar one, aren't we? Yeah. With, yeah, yeah in right. number two. So it's exciting. Now I'm going to another thing from Money Smart because we're not near the end of this podcast. But I look with the Money Smart website. There's heaps of stuff, and I brought up their budget compound interest calculator, and it's pretty good to play with. And I put in there if you started with ten thousand dollars and you put one thousand dollars away every single month for 30 years and you got a rate of return of 6% on that, which you can get just by buying shares mm. easily because they've already, you know, yeah. they've already said that on the other one. The result is you have a million dollars in 30 years. Yep. It's for $10,000 starting and $1,000 each month for 30 years. Yep. You end up with a million dollars. Now, obviously 6% of inflation is at three to four. Mm. It's eating up half of that. So you've got yep. the spending power of half a million but you're going to be able to retire. Yeah. It's not hard to do. A lot of people can put $10,000 into an account and then put $1,000 away every single month if they mm. try hard. But this is what you can achieve. But I only brought this up as an example for people to go and see the calculator, moneysmart.gov.au forward slash budgeting forward slash compound interest calculator or just type in ASICS compound interest calculator will come up mm. and plug some figures in and see what you can do and can Actually, achieve. Actually, I'm glad you said it like it's just an example because – in 30 mm. years, the you, you, what you rec- can retire on today may be half a million to a million depending yeah. on what you think your spending is going to be. Mm. But in 30 years' time, it could be, you know, one million to three million. I don't, I don't know. know. But mm. it's just about playing for it to give you the reality of what what you could actually be doing. So to mm. me, I think people should go to that Money Smart website and have a good look at it because at the end of the day, we need to go right down where we want to be. Mm. So if you say, I want a million dollars in retirement in, let's say, a bank account. Yep. Earning 5%. Well, then we need to step that back. Well, how are you going to get that? Mm. And that's really all we're saying here. So what we're talking about with that Money Smart website and all the data that we've shown people is where's the reality check? So mm. do the reality check now. Where am I today? How much money have I got in the bank? What's my wage? Mm-hmm. What's my likelihood? How long am I going to be likely working for? Because generally people say, like, I mean, I know when I was like 19, 20, I was retiring at 30. Mm. Well, actually, no, 25. And then when I was 25, I said, I'm going to retire at 30. When I was at 30, I go, no, I'm going to retire at 35. Mm. Well, I sort of retired about 39, roughly. Mm. But I didn't miss my first ones. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's who cares as long mm. as you're moving forward. You know, things happen in your life. You get married, things, you know, you buy houses, you do all sorts of stuff. But at the end of the day, as long as you've got that plan, so it's about looking at where are you today, where mm. would you like to be, and then reverse engineer all that. 
yep. and start. And that's some of the stuff we're going to do on our next podcast or podcast two. Fantastic. Which is really exciting with the data we've got there and how we're going to show you how to do, get that, the objective that we talked about in this podcast because I think, you know, we don't want to, we're going to finish this podcast up. We don't want to overload them too much. I don't want to overload one. everybody. So again, if you are listening to us on an audio podcast, on whether it's iTunes or whatever else, you can head over to uh, YouTube, type in Wealth Within TV and you'll be able to bring up this podcast as a video. You'll see all the slides we've just gone through and you'll see all the websites that we've talked about so you can go to them yourself and I suggest you do that to do the research. Um, if you do want a copy of uh, my book, my first one is still for free. You've just got to pay the shipping. Head over to wealthwithin.com.au and you'll be able to get how to beat the managed funds by 20%, which goes through the three laws of wealth creation. And it talks about the stock market and how you can do what we're going to talk about next week or in the next podcast. So if you haven't got that, get it. If you have got it, buy the second book, uh, which is called Accelerate Your Wealth. Um, and if people are interested in the stock market, give our team a call and you can do our beginner course right through to our diploma course and, and learn how to get more than 5 and 6%, which is what the mm. industry talk about. It's not that hard to do that, you know. It's just about getting started. Mm. Anything else you want to add to that before I sign off? Um, no, apart from the fact that, you know, we, we just really want to help people mm. get to where they want to go and it's so important for them to mm. – it doesn't matter where you are, mm. you know, and what where you're up to with things, just get started really. Just get started. Perfect. Mm. That was great last words. Okay. You. Well, you've been listening to Talking Wealth with Janine Cox, Senior Analyst here at Wealth Within, and I'm Dale Gillum, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk to you on the next podcast. Bye-bye.